Hello, good evening. It's Friday, it's 7 p.m. This is Easy 8 Online Painting Club. My name's Danny. It says it right down at the bottom, down at the bottom of the screen there. Wow, what a what an interesting afternoon, evening I'm having. Um, I hope that you can all hear me fine. Um, I can see all my levels of volume, but I can't hear any of my normal music that normally goes on in the background. This is an error that sometimes happens uh, with the software that I use. I've spent the last 35 minutes trying to do a problem solve, uh, and it's just not working. I think you should be able to hear my music, and you should be able to hear my voice. Uh, if not, please uh, do hit me up in the live chat on the side over there. Um, if, if you can't hear the music, it, it shouldn't be a problem. As long as you can hear my voice and you can read each other's chats and... Yeah, hey, that should be fine, right? Got some comments going on already. Luke, Jeff and Leslie all there saying hello. Uh, Luke says sound is all good so far. Fantastic. Leslie says here I am. Hello everyone. Uh, always got my regular viewers and, I, and I'm very, very happy about that. Thanks very much. Uh, Jeff says sounds okay. So the music's all fine. That's cool. Brilliant. I just can't hear it myself. Weird. I don't know why it is, probably some sort of update somewhere along the line. Anyway, I hope that you guys are all uh, well and happy and have had a productive week. Um, I haven't done any painting this week. It's been one of the busier weeks uh, with work and other things going on, you know, in, in, in the world. Um, but as Kyle has always said, it's nice to have the two hours at the end of the week at least to look forward to, to come back and, you know, just do a little bit of personal painting time and enjoy something i've got some new people going in this evening uh, leslie says uh, hearing everything just fine my friend and shaz chadwick says can hear both really well hey everyone hi shaz chadwick uh, a, a new a new name to the live chat that's absolutely fantastic welcome to the show this is easy eight my name is danny uh leslie's per hey shaz um, wow i'd like to know if, if you have been brought along by one of the people in our you know in a little community or if you've just found it and come along Welcome. I hope that you get lots out of this show. If you are new here, Shaz. Oh, Adrian's in there. Good evening. Did you say something? I I hope that I've said stuff and you heard it. Don't don't you toy with my emotions now. That would be very sad. If you are new here, um, Easy Eight is not uh, a tutorial channel. I always say it every week. Um, don't come with those expectations. This is merely a, a, a live online um, sort of social club where you can just come along and do your painting you know securing the knowledge that there's always someone out there live doing stuff as well so you can ask for help you can you know get some tips you can just show your stuff off if you want to and just kind of just chill out knowing that there's someone out there is is struggling sometimes because it's nice to know that someone else is struggling through monotonous work or with a particular task or trying to develop that's what we're all about um so the shaz says thank you so much i'm leslie's bestie oh hi welcome Great, cool. That's because last week I challenged you as a community to bring someone along. Leslie wins. Cha-ching, you can have yourself a Danny point. Save those up by the end of the year. You could buy yourself a boat or something. Who knows? Cool. Um, normally we are joined um, by Kyle. But for the last few weeks, we know that Carla has been exceptionally busy. Um, and he just, for every week, now for the next couple of weeks, he's probably not going to be here. As always, sends his love, sends his best, uh, and is really looking forward to getting stuck back into it. I haven't spoken to him very recently, so that's how busy he really is. So again, it's just going to be me this evening, just going to be painting away. I'd love to know what you guys are up to. Uh, please do let me know and you know talk to each other in the live chat over there about the projects that you're bringing this evening, that you're painting. Um, um, and if you've got any problems, then we're here to help and kind of get you through it. Or if you're just having a really good time, just let us know. That'd be great. Um, perhaps if you want to, you could uh, head on over to our Facebook page. We're not just here on YouTube. We also have Instagram as well. Um, our Facebook page is, is pretty active. Uh, people post up pictures of all their stuff, all their projects and, you know, works in progress and things like that. Um, head on over and... Uh, have a little look around, maybe drop a like, maybe drop a follow. Uh, and if you are new, please do consider um, subscribing to this channel because every little bit, every little subscribe really goes a long way to help this channel grow and thrive. Um, so yeah, there is some good news on the horizon. Luke Gallia has been helping me throughout the week. I say helping me, has done a lot of the work himself really. I just went, uh, Luke, I want this and has helped set up a Discord server. Yes! If you don't know what Discord is, and I know there's a few of you out there like, oh, what's that strange word? It's basically a live chat room where we could just access it at any time, day or night, during the week. You might be the only one on. 
and you might be sitting there and then someone can come on and join in and it's a little bit like having this show but in a chat room um 24 7 you know it's brilliant i would have not have had uh, the faintest idea on what to do to set that up luke is is the brains and the magician behind all of that so um live on show luke gallia thank you very much for all the help and assistance that you've that you've put into that and the time and effort that you've put into programming all the bots and setting all that server up and i've basically gone oh, i want some some rooms to do this in and yes it's been really really good it's not live just yet um, I wanted it to be live a little while ago, but you know the world's resetting, and it's it's nice to just kind of be at work and putting focus into those areas. Um, but hopefully by next week, um, I would like to be able to launch that server. It just needs a few little tweaks and twerks and stuff. And yeah, Luke, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, just you know the the finesse and it all. And for me to actually know what I'm doing, what we're going to do is we're going to have it live so that anyone can kind of come along and just be there if you're painting around, not just on a Friday evening, uh, but after Friday evenings, we're going to do a little after party club. So if you want to come along and you you know, wanted to discuss more of something that we spoke about in one of our episodes live on a Friday, then straight away after the show, uh, for at least half an hour, maybe to an hour, I'll, I'll be on. Obviously, I, I have a life as well, and I need to consider the time that I spend doing it. Um, but yeah, you can you can basically just come along and actually join in. There are going to be uh, video chat rooms. There'll be just text chat rooms. There's lots of different categories for you to go and have a little look at. Um, so you can post up pictures, put up questions. Um, um, just put up general things and there's even stuff outside of the hobby so if you want to talk about a new recipe you made Luke has considered all aspects of it like we said this community is is really personal to all of us uh, and we want to have a place where everyone can just kind of go and just enjoy each other's company no matter what it is so that's going to be on discord more details on that to come I'm very very excited about it um, and it does mean that like when I've got spare time on a day off whatever and I'm going to come down here I'll put the chat room on and you can come and find me and just have, have an actual general chat with me so yeah that's another platform that we're looking into we did have someone join us on twitch um so twitch didn't really work out for us just because of the amount of um effort that my computer has to go through to get twitch running <laughs> it just crashed everything and my computer actually just then froze very very briefly when i said twitch so maybe it's got like trauma or something if you are the individual who joined us over on twitch um, i hope you find this message and you come on over to youtube where it's going to be for the foreseeable future i spoke about it episodes and episodes ago um yeah it <laughs> destroyed the evening oh yeah the shell shock anyway um i'd love to know what it is that you guys are working on this evening i'm about to take you over to the table here to show you what i'm working on just gonna have a little look at the live chat because people are still talking uh jeff says uh, i brought the voices in my head yep yeah, cool um keep those over there i don't want those <laughs> uh leslie says yeah i win stuff bestie being a bestie bestie okay you're very excited yep yeah, cool i get that <laughs> adrian wheels so many wheels yeah man because yeah, oh, you started on that um 135th king tiger build um I, I thought i had a lot of wheels here for my panther your king tiger is gonna be burying you right now it looks really cool um, so well done on the work that you're putting into that absolutely cracking if anyone wants to see adrian's work on his 135th tiger or tiger 2 um, head over to facebook and have a little look over there um jeff says should have bought sherman <laughs> yeah you should have <laughs> luke says uh, that was probably me following on twitch oh uh, okay cool well hey you found us on twitch we, we don't really do much with twitch at the moment not until i can have better computer solutions down here um okay cool uh, and you're working on your normal sisters of battle this time with an added two whips <gasps> please do take a photograph and stick it over on facebook that would be wonderful Anyway, let me take you up to my workbench over here. Oh dear. Here we go. This is my workbench. Hey, for Shaz or any other people who are watching this evening, this is my workbench. Um, so yeah, uh, this is, what did I call it? Brenda the Sherbert Carnivex. I don't even remember how we got into that name. Um, my watch is going crazy. People are talking to me. Oh, wonderful. Um, so yeah, I've been I've been doing a lot of work on the carapace on my on my card effects. I'm really enjoying the process. I haven't done anything with it this week at all, um, but I've been doing a lot of blending on here. And basically, that's what I'm going to be carrying on with tonight. Uh, last week, I I actually applied my ink, which is normally an airbrush application, 
Um, I, I normally apply it with airbrush. I, I applied it with brush to get it in some of the small detail areas, like on the legs, because it was quite difficult to kind of get in with, um, with the airbrush. I still got to apply it to a couple of areas, the forearms here and the hooves, and there's a bit on the tail, and then there's some general spikes and whatever all over the place. But that's a, a lot of black for now. I've just basically got to practice blending my greys. I practiced on this little piece here last week, and, and though on my screen it looks like it's fairly bleached out under the lights, I know it shows up on the replay or on your screens pretty well. So um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting that blended. I, I'm getting better, and that's what I'm really trying to do, is trying to push my, my progression, my development as a painter, and just get better with every model that I do. If you head on over to Facebook or even Instagram, you'll see my previous Carapace works where they, they look really cool, but they look very pop arty, and I, I wanted to kind of depart from that appearance and get it more blended so I'm basically just adding more greys into it and kind of blending off so um, I've got the base grey I haven't sludged washed sludged washed can't say that I haven't applied a wash all over because um, that the tones the, the grey down so I've just applied ink into the recesses blended that out and then adding another grey on there and what I might do for a, a future creature to progress again is I might start adding um, more shades of grey into it but obviously that's going to add on time so the ideas that I've had is that maybe for smaller creatures hoarder units and things is that I would just do what I've done here and then for bigger creatures start adding more greys in just to get some really nice blends but yeah anyway I'm pretty chuffed with it it looks awesome more comments going on uh, Adrian says 22 wheels to clean assemble and paint yeah I've got mine painted they, they need to be stained with the enamel washes um, but they, uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty much ready to go. So here's my ones that I've got with the, the, the primer color, because they could be my replacement wheels. And then, well, yeah, you've seen me do them all. But I can't remember how many I've got of these. I think I've got 32, but that includes the drive wheels and the, uh, the, the tension wheels at the rear as well. Yeah, maybe should have gone for a Sherman or just a car. <laughs> right, I'm gonna have my tea because, oh dear, parched. Mm-mm. It has been um, a long day of standing, or well, last a long couple of days, standing in the pouring rain, um, doing um, all sorts of really cool assessments and training for my, my new job, where I'm an activity instructor leader, so I lead a group of instructors. Um, yeah, and it's just been, <laughs> the weather just turned on us over the last couple of days, and it has been wet. So I literally just got home, I threw some food down my throat literally seconds before we went live. Uh, had a shower when I got home. Yeah, so it's been, it's been a bit mental this evening. Um, and then, of course, I had to deal with all the audio problems. So, yeah. I've had, like, one cup of tea all day. It's not nearly enough. Not nearly enough caffeine. And also, during the week, I did my maths exam. For those of you that have been following, I took myself back to school and retook my maths because I am rubbish. And I wasn't feeling very good about it, but when I did the exam, actually, it may have gone well. Keep you posted, see what happens. Am I a mathematician? Who knows? So, oh, more comments going on. Shao uh, says, cool workbench. <laughs> Thanks very much. And the detailing is brilliant. Ah, oh, thank you very much. I'm, yeah, I'm really chuffed with it, so thank you. That means a lot. Um, what I do is I use um, Dawnstone from Citadel as the dark base grey, and then I apply my... I used to use non-oil, but I, I was really struggling with that, and now I use um, from Ammo Mig, or Mig Mina's Ammo, one of their shaders. It's an acrylic ink. Uh, it actually takes a long time to dry. You apply it by airbrush. It's, it's really, really good. Um, and I've had some wonderful um, sort of results from it. And then I highlight with Ministratum Grey from Citadel. I was playing with a couple of other greys from the Vallejo Air Range, because I have them. I have Cold Grey and Stone Wall Grey. I'll get in the shot, Danny. That probably helps, doesn't it? Um, to see if I, well, I had like different grades of colours. And you can see I just test them out on this piece of paper. So I've got um, here, this one here is uh, the, the Citadel colours, the darker light. And then these two here, are the um, Vallejo Air ones. You can see between these two colours, they're actually almost identical. Um, but what it does give me is one, two, three colors so if i want to do even more highlighting i've got one of those um air colors to use uh, which is stonewall um i'm not going to buy any more paints i i do have like an impulse habit of going like yeah more stuff let's go get some more stuff and just cracking on and <laughs> buying things and playing around with them and probably never never using them ever again 
so um, yeah when I go on to my next build I might consider maybe getting some more shades and practicing so just clean the brush gel out of my brush I've done a big bad today because I got home and was rushing I have not changed my paint water from the last time I used it so I have a pretty messy brush water during the intermission <laughs> in just under an hour I will be going to change that uh, yeah always make sure you change your water um, Leslie says fingers crossed your master results are awesome thanks very much I mean if it's not I still am allowed to kind of go on and continue studying for it it's at a really basic level I'm very embarrassed by my ability to do or not to do maths um, but I would like to have a degree in something um, for my own sake of just knowing stuff and having maths will be a good place to start for that uh, Shaz says uh, it complements each other well doesn't it great choices oh thanks very much you must be talking about the grey colours yes I think they're really really cool um, grey is a really nice colour to paint with and there are some colours that just, just are really easy or you know fun to use um, yeah grey and blue are also really good colours um, yellows are notoriously difficult but um, I've I, I kind of get around that by using an airbrush. My wet palette is not very wet, so I'm just going to apply a little bit of water in here. It's got a bit of moisture underneath, but I want a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I've got here somewhere. Here we go. It's a little bit of water from what I use for my airbrush in this little dropper bottle. And I just kind of give it a little bit of a squirt underneath and let it run around. And it just applies a little bit more moisture. It's because it's been a week and I haven't really done much with it. So I just kind of, yeah. Just drop a little bit of water in there pop that back down and just kind of let it swirl around a little bit and that'll be enough for this evening um i'll fill it with my lid there it is cool fantastic so let's get that paint on the palette and i'm gonna start doing some more highlights on on brenda brenda cool so i did this plate here I will probably work my way down backwards here because these ones are going to be quite easy to do. Um, the front one here has like lots of spikes and kind of barnacle style features all over it. So it'll probably be quite different. Um, I've still yet to do the sides of this carapace. So that'll be the next next step, I think. It's just to kind of carry on that blending, work my way backwards, trying to handle it as little as I possibly can because in some places I'm starting to remove paint, which isn't ideal. But it's going to happen. I have varnished it a couple of times uh, to try and reduce that. But until it is, is all done, I'm not going to go crazy with the varnish because I'm just going to start covering up details. And that also is not going to be ideal. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water into that blob of paint I've put in my wet palette. You can't really see it there, but yeah, there. The wet palette will add its own water to it over time. So if I add too much water now, I could end up... Oh, got a hair in my brush. I could end up um, just having just runny grey water. So it's it's a bit of a balance when you're using a wet palette as to how how much you wet the paint or not kind of thin it down. But you should thin your paints or have your paints thin enough to use. It's very weird, you know, <laughs> having no music in the background. Normally I've got my music to kind of keep me company, but it's just it's a silent room here don't know what that is I, I, I've obviously I've updated something and uh, yeah something happened I'm also very very sorry for the very unprofessional looking um, schedule that I put up on Facebook uh, I actually went to go and do it last night I, I like to do them either the Wednesday or Thursday before we go live uh, and put a, a nice little graphic up and you know actually have like a little listing of the things that I'm going to talk about of the evening I did I went to go do it yesterday and then I had a, an, not an emergency phone call but a phone call that unfortunately took my attention away and then I just finished the evening and just totally forgot about it until this morning just before I was going to work so apologies for that it is literally just because like I say the world is returning to normal um yeah oh, it's just a bit of a letdown but you know I put a funky graphic up there this afternoon did that um, or this evening when I got home normal service will resume very very shortly uh, like I say we we're actually going into full operation at my job uh, this Monday uh, so it's not like the training the intense training has been where I'm just coming home at 
you know god knows what time every day and um tired or wet or you know whatever um, it's actually going to be a bit a bit normal moving on now so let me get this paint sorted so what i'm going to do is i'm going to if I be, I've been kind of like edging all the way um, along the sort of the furthest edge out of this piece of carapace and just kind of edge highlighting and then I work my way in just by kind of dragging it brushing it down well, unfortunately my really nice army painter brush isn't really holding as much of a point anymore that's probably just because it's been used a little bit and I need to shape it let's make that paint just a little bit thinner Yeah, that's a bit better. So I'm just gonna run it along the edge. Uh, oh, Darren's with us. Evening all. Nice to see you again, Darren. Thanks for coming along, mate. I hope you're doing well. I hope your living room's all painted. <laughs> Painting club, you can paint whatever you want. Doesn't matter. There's like a little crack or a little split in the carapace there, and I'd just like to highlight the edges of those too. I've got a bit too much paint in my brush. My lights are certainly too close to my hands. There we go. Uh, <laughs> Leslie says, all the love for Brenda, she's hot. <laughs> well, okay, each, each to their own. But yeah, I've got, I've got a, lo a lot of love for Carnifexes on the tabletop. If you play Warhammer 40,000, then yeah, you, you, you know. Giant living battering ram tank thing. I think they're awesome. Okay, so sort of got that that line there edged as best I possibly can. It's quite tricky. It's amazing how out of practice you get when you've been away from it just for a few days. struggling there and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of brush stroke from the top backwards and then just blend it in I'm wondering actually this is quite bright I wonder if I actually last week may, maybe you folks can remember maybe I um, I did a 50 50 mix because it looks quite bright here compared to what I've done in the past I think I did because that looks quite quite light in comparison to the rest of it so yeah perhaps perhaps that's what I done or did I use one of my air my air colors <gasps> I don't know what did I do okay well do you know what let's stop before I ruin it and I'll, I'll go to one of my air colors I'll give that a try because that might tell me what I done this is what happens when you don't do anything during the week you see so actually I don't I don't think I did anything different. I'm gonna do a little mix. I'm gonna mix 50-50, see what happens. Let's give a little splodge. seems fairly familiar now I'm sure I was talking about going into the realms of mixing my own colors it looks a bit better actually hmm maybe that's what I did <laughs> I just don't know because that what I just done on Brenda there looks a little bit reminiscent of my my other creatures whether it was a little bit too pop arty pop arty is fine that's not what I want. Well, so I wonder if any of you guys out there actually write down your your techniques or your recipes or anything. Like, do you, do you, like when you're working on a build, do you write stuff down so that you don't forget it, like I just have? It'd be quite interesting to know. Maybe I should like take a, a painting journal or something. Okay, let's try this again. I'll go on the other side this time and I'll uh, I'll 
compare. Again, I'll add a bit of water into this. I think my uh, yeah my, my army painter brush needs a little bit of attention. I think I'm starting to have a couple of sprays on there. All rogue bristles and things. This colour looks a little bit closer. So maybe I must have blended last time. Now Jeff says, I think you used your air colours last time. Yeah, maybe. Maybe I did. Let's see. I'll just touch this one on. Okay, I, th I think I blended my own colours. I mixed my own colours in. So, yeah. All right, well, what I'm going to do, because I'm, I'm not going to waste that. The thing is, is in the palette, they don't stay like it. They actually um, they separate once they, once they become too moistened when they become too wet from the water underneath they're going to split down so it's very hard to tell if if i you know what colors i had beforehand so you, yeah you probably should like um like record it perhaps writing it down yeah this this is a much closer color i think comfortable today. Some days I just don't get into the right position. So yeah, I'm struggling to do edging with this brush to me, that's a bit unusual. I think that is actually pretty close colour there if you compare it to the other side that pops far too much uh oh some people telling me here leslie stebbing says i have a basic system for mixing paints judging one part paint to one to two parts other colors and one part water usually works but depends on what paint you're using yeah you're right every brand is different aren't they it's um yeah you got to get used to a specific thing okay i'm actually, I'm actually struggling with that brush so I'm going to use my expensive one. So I have here my Raphael Kalinsky, uh, number two, and it goes down to a really nice point. I haven't used it for a little while. Nice to get back into using it. So I'm just going to put a bit of paint on there. I can rotate it into a really, really fine needle. And it's really cool. And I might actually get another one of these, but a smaller size, just for this sort of work, actually. Um, the army painter brush is really good, but it's starting to lose its edge a little bit. And as this brush is four times more expensive, um, I think that the point's probably going to hold longer. Lovely. If you are looking to upgrade your brushes, you should definitely start considering spending just a little bit more money. Um, it might seem like a quite an expensive initial outlay, but your painting is going to improve so much. Um, Adrian says, recording what you do. Maybe you could stream your recordings on a channel like YouTube. I don't have time for that. That's what you're here for. You watch all that stuff back. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. Okay, so. Can I just get that? Yeah, there we go. Going in a bit too heavy. Probably because I've just had a bit of a, a hectic day, a hectic couple of days. I'm probably not going to do this, the world of justice. So I've got some other projects. If I um, if I feel that I'm just going to kind of ruin it, and it's just not going to be as good as I want it to be, I can just kind of come away from this project and, and do something else. Yeah, I'm struggling. I am struggling today. Weird. I might try and cover up this colour that I've just done over on this side. See if I can hide it a little bit. Is it going to hide? 
it's not. So I'm probably just gonna have to paint over it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna change projects. Just having a bit of a, a bit of a mare trying to just be neat and tidy. I think I'm just a little bit uh, hectic, perhaps. That's the uh, international hand gesture for hectic fact. Okay, let me just paint over that little bit on the side, just so it doesn't look so rubbish. No one will ever notice. I can blend that away later. Easy. There we are. Okay. Perhaps I'll, I'll come back to one a bit later this evening. Maybe I'll just come back to it next time and pick up some paintbrushes. Who knows? So. No harm, no foul. Sorry, Brenda. You're going over there, mate. Maybe I will bring in Sharon. Is it Sharon? I can't. I can't remember now. <laughs> you guys have given me my things so such weird names. Um, yeah, Tracy the Trigon, Sharon the Trigon. Can't remember. Uh, but yeah, my Trigon. I was kind of doing this one roughly at the same time as the Carnifex. Uh, this one has a lot more uh, work to do in terms of blocking those colours out. Um, so just filling in the areas that I wanted to be carapaced. Carapaste, is that even a word? You know what I mean. Um, so I've just got to try and edge things in. So still a little bit on the neat and tidy work, um, but not not exactly, it's not as hard as what I need to do on the Khan effects. And there are some bits and pieces that, you know, are quite unfinished. I've got some claws and things on there. So yeah, I can, I can crack on and, and do things like that this evening. Um, do any of you guys have days where it's just not working, but you really want it to? Do you then go ahead and do it and potentially ruin it? Do you, do you struggle or do you just, put it down and go like do you know what tonight's not the night I see I, I really struggle with it I when I get it into my head that I want to go painting I want to go painting and uh, <laughs> just put Sue yeah Susan Susan the Trigon thank you very much yeah as I was saying when I when I get into a painting mood like it's, it's all I want to do I just want to go and paint and I kind of I want to see that thing finished I want to see that that part done and I want to move on to the next thing and the, the progressions in my head and if I if I'm not having a good day painting, I really struggle to not do it. <laughs> and I, yeah, I can end up ruining things. And I just wondered if um, that's just me or if others struggle too. It's kind of why I set up this channel in hope that, um, you know, people who do struggle have someone to turn to. No, friend of my love. Oh, hello, Susan. Her name's Susan the Trigon. Hello, Hottie. Yeah, you've got um, some deep-seated issues there that I think um, that maybe this community isn't <laughs> qualified to help you with. I, I, I do understand that you're also a Nurgle player, so it's probably where those, those issues are. I don't actually think you have issues. Let's clear that up. Right, okay. Let's, um, let's paint this bad boy bad girl paint this bad girl up it isn't a bad girl okay so I think what I'm gonna do is I'll just to get into the habit of painting this evening just doing something nice and easy so I'm just gonna do all the little spiky claw things all over it um, yeah because they've got to be done at some point right it's nice to get some paint on something like a little tick list of things to get done Oh, I've got to get all the spikes down, I've got to get all the teeth down, so on and so forth. Let's just tick some boxes. It's a shame that Brenda has to go away. I was really enjoying the blending process, blending on Brenda. Um, but yeah, I don't want to ruin it, I don't want to have to like come back in a couple of days or whatever to repair damage. I mean, we've spoken a few weeks ago about traumatic things that we've done when we should have probably put down our tools. I just wonder if um, if people are able to kind of put their painting down. I just can't. I just I just like it so much. I like it when I'm when I'm winning. Or I have this really good idea in my head. I really struggle sometimes to like translate that over into the physical world. And this idea in my head 
Oh, it's going to look really cool when I get this done. We're getting that done hard and I'm not very good. I know that Susan here is a morass of limbs and spikes components, so you might not actually necessarily be able to see everything that I'm painting. I apologise for that. second coat because we know what they say two thin coats as a minimum actually unless you're painting with contrast paints but that's an entirely different thing altogether <laughs> do like contrast paints as well I think they're, they're really cool Just, uh, I don't want to use them for no reason other than I suppose I just don't. You know, I've, I've kind of got my my techniques and my standards and the thingy, things that I do, and it's introducing just another product. It's just going to be oh, just another thing to have to tackle. But I, I do wish that when I started my tyranny yellow scheme, that I was that I was using the um, the yellow contrast paint because the effect from it was just amazing. But it was just such a departure from what I'd already done. It would have it would have stood out like a sore thumb. Now I, I know I'm developing my my grey colour scheme, but it was yeah it was it was very different, very very different. <laughs> I got some chuckles going in there from Shaz. <laughs> It's the spiky limbs they get me every time I see. <laughs> yeah. Spiky limbs and just just spikes, just everywhere. Just giving this girl a hug is is gonna be a health hazard. Don't hug trigons. Public service announcement. Nearly broke her arm off there. Yeah, I'm being a bit heavy-handed today. That's that's what I've 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 learned. Probably just need to sit down with a glass of wine and just chill out this evening. I just want to paint. difficult as well to just kind of get an angle with the paintbrush and just yeah there are so many ways to come in at this and yeah it's a, it's a struggle trying to get this uh, paint in some of these places just wipe it across the bottom of that just clean that up I'm feeling a bit of a clutch today Remember, a couple of weeks ago I said that this Trigon and various other tier ones I got were all a very generous gift from Leslie. Thanks again, Leslie. Um, I've got a lot of models here. Just consider how long it's taking me to paint just this one model, how long it's going to take me to get through that box. It's, it's a lifetime hobby supply that you've given me there. 
Um, so thanks once again, but yikes, a lot to do. Got a random cat here in there. And I can see at the corner of my eye that you have made another Trigon comment. <laughs> I'm coming at it. Just trying to get that. That is a cat hair in there. Thank you. Cool. Uh, yeah, but I want to hug the Trigon. Oh yeah, you, you feel your boots, mate. You, you go for it. <laughs> Shaz says, uh, the shading and the highlighting is very well done. My OCD is happy. Oh, thanks, man. That's... That's really cool. That's really kind. It's um, yeah. The, on on the trigon here, I I did try something different. Try on the trigon. Um, and I I don't know if you can really see on the camera here. Um, but at the closer the yellow gets to the carapace areas, um, I tried and I I, I don't think I delivered it very well. But I tried to go to, to more orangey colours. It was certainly a lot more noticeable when I didn't paint the greys in because you can see the overspill. The easiest place to see it is on the head, just up into there. I just kind of wanted to get some like saturations of colours and just kind of some variations in there to make it look a bit more natural. It's definitely something that I'm going to work on. Uh, but I'm happy with it overall. The, the 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 wash, the stain that's kind of all over it is Seraphim Sepia, which, um, which I, I really like. I think that works really well. So yeah, I think the the contrast paint that I that I wanted to use uh, would have given me like nice detailing. Where when it kind of collects, it would have gone like an orangey sort of color, um, which is kind of what I wanted originally. But then I started painting them with uh, with basically a, a brown, which is the seraphim sepia. So it was it, it's not like the, uh, the the blending of the grays will improve and change the model's appearance over a period of time. Um, it would have been almost a, a totally different color scheme. So uh, yeah, I, I made the decision to, to not change how I was doing it and go to contrast paints. There's a part of me that regrets it, um, but I, I do enjoy the process that I have. I've seen some very wonderful um, jobs that you know, people have painted with contrast paints. I kind of wanted to be a part of that party, but at the same time, you know, I'm just trying to focus on one development at a time. So, blending my greys. Greys are a beautiful colour to work with. I don't know what it is about about them. <laughs> I'm really struggling to get into this claw here. It's, it's really difficult. Got it. I'm in, yes. I think, no, I was going to say that's all the spikes on one side done. It is not. There are so many spikes. There's one in there as well. Wait, can we see? Yeah, there we go. We can see it. Do you know, it's, it's, um, one thing is to paint and another thing is to paint on a camera. It's, it's a difficult task. And when I set this channel up six months ago, I, I did not anticipate this being a skill that I will have to try and develop. Uh, Leslie says, you're very welcome to. Seriously, not a problem. Uh, Trigon uh, hugs is not abuse. Uh, Nurgle would spread the love. Okay, cool. I, I, th I think it, yeah. I think it's getting into dark territory territory hugging tyranids. It sounds like a cultist activity if you want my opinion. Okay, that is the first coat done on one set of spikes down the side of the torso. One side of the torso. Now I've got the thorax, is that right? Abdomen, thorax? I, I just don't know my anatomies that well. Top bit, bottom bit. There we go. I want to be a scientist, me. Oh, excuse me, that's my my dinner repeating on me.
I have also noticed that over the last couple of weeks we've had a couple more subscribers. They've been very, very quiet subscribers, kind of took me by surprise. I just realised it when the count went up from 34 to 36. So if you're one of my new subscribers in the last few weeks and I didn't realise, I apologise for not seeing. Uh, but also, welcome to the show. And uh, yeah, I hope you find what you want from the show. Um, maybe you watch it on replay. Maybe you just watch one episode every now and then. Maybe you're one of the quiet viewers in the background who doesn't like to get involved in the live chat. That's fine cool however you want to play it um but yeah a couple of new subscribers is always nice if you do know anyone who you think might be interested in the show please do let them know because we want the community to grow um you know and just maybe shaz you're you're new you've been invited by a friend maybe pass the love on and bring another friend and maybe they can bring a friend and so on and so forth 36 subscribers this week next week 10,000 and sore as well from being in the outdoors and handling climbing ropes and things and yeah I don't think that's really helping this evening my skin will get used to being in the outdoors it always takes a little bit of getting used to it again yeah my brush needs a little bit of shaping on the end it's just it's kind of falling apart a little bit or falling apart it's just a little bit out of shape got like one random bristle it's just I don't know if you can see on the camera it's probably quite difficult to see can we see I don't know just no it's very difficult to be in focus <laughs> so so no no face hugs no, no def definitely no face hugs certainly is a cultist activity yeah it absolutely is um yeah government rules now say hugging is okay as long as there isn't any face-to-face -face contact yeah okay <laughs> you know Face huggers is one thing that we don't have in the Tyranid army. I think we just have face eaters, face choppers. That is something that chops your face off, not chops with your face. Or maybe they got those too. There is a face hugger style implantation of uh, alien things in the in the Tyranid force, but yeah, no no face huggers. I suppose that IP is is claimed. again and then you gotta shade them all and then you gotta blend them this is a real a real project just uh, <laughs> scrape that another cat hair out of my paint mental we've got uh, just a couple of minutes before we're gonna head on over to our um, our intermission where we'll take a break for a few minutes well at least I'll take a break maybe I'll have some of my tea I'll certainly go and change the paint water that I've got sat on my desk because it is appalling I, I think it's the source of the cat hairs trying to get in the frame but I know that on this screen there there is no <laughs> there is no um, camera if you have been painting something this evening I'd love to know what it is that you're 
that you're working on, what project is you've got on there. I know they've got a couple of people that have already said what they're working on. Adrian's obviously working on his uh, Tiger 2. I was asking some questions with some photographs on Facebook the other day. Do go on and head, o head on over to Facebook and have a little look over there. Uh, Luke has um, said that he's painting his sisters a battle again. That is your, your current force, isn't it? Um, yeah, I'd love to know what everybody else is working on. Leslie, are you working on some more of your Nurgle stuff? I know you've been doing a lot of custom builds using some very interesting um, homemade techniques and things looking very cool and disgusting. Are you working on anything else this evening? Or are you doing more terrain style stuff? Shaz, what are you working on? Are you working on anything? Or are you just kind of here for the for the, the conversation in the company? Or have you got a little project on the go as well? I'd love to know. Um, if you head on over to Facebook and you want to post some things, if you want to post questions or if you want to post pictures of your work or just have a look at other people's stuff, you need to go to Facebook, go to Easy8 page, uh, click on the community tab and that is where you'll be able to see uh, what other people are posting, um, otherwise it's just stuff from me. You can do whatever you want there, it's, it's for you guys, not just for me. I still can't hear my music by the way, it's, it's really bothering me. I'm just in this quiet solitude. <laughs> we, we will conquer the world. Okay, yeah, cool. Bring more people. Let's let's do it. Like, I'd love to have a thousand subscribers. It would be amazing. Just just triple figures for now. But yeah, great. Uh, Leslie says, "Damn right, uh, hug here in his worship Nurgle. Dan dance with Nurglings and be happy." Yeah, yeah there's there's the heretic talk again. Oh, some of these, some of these claws are so positioned so awkwardly. Well, I'm going to clean my brush out, and then I'm going to go and clean my water, because it is nasty. Ugh, that's pretty gross. And maybe I'll shape my paintbrush as well. Okay, getting some stuff done over here. It's a shame that the uh, technical work that I was doing with the blending isn't really the thing this evening. Sometimes it's just difficult to do that sort of stuff, so that's why it's always nice to have a couple of projects on the go. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Leslie says, uh, thank you, dude. I'm actually working on a piece of terrain and filming it. F filming it? D did I read that correctly? Filming it. Uh, when I can edit it and put a voiceover track to it, it'll be the first video for the YouTube channel. Nice. That's going to be really cool. Uh, if you need any help with that during the week, let us know. If, I, if I've got the time or the, the know-how, then yeah, sure. Like like I said, you know, this this channel, you know, we, me and Kyle are quite happy to collaborate with you to, to make something happen with that. But I don't know what we can do, but hey, we're here. Uh, love to see it. So maybe we can get like a first sneak peek. <gasps> That'd be cool. Um, yeah. Luke says an inquisitor wants to know your location. Yeah, yeah, you said too, you've given too much away this evening, Leslie. <laughs> that's, that's definitely right. Ooh. Right. Well, we'll take a little break just for a few minutes. Enough time for you to go stretch your legs or visit the bathroom. Change your paint water. You should definitely, definitely change your paint water. Uh, Hear some cool music while you wait, and we'll be back in about ten minutes. See you shortly.
welcome back. It's it's a very difficult thing trying to judge your audio cues when you can't hear the music. It's weird, but I just turned on the channel on my phone, as you can see in the chat. Yeah, the music's coming through. I I don't I don't know why. So yeah, I just had to watch the little bars doing their thing. Okay, cool. If that came across well, I'm a good broadcaster. Yeah, I'll take that. You guys are getting on. Very chatty. Nice to see the community building on itself there. And I, I was just reading the stuff that you guys have been talking about. Um, it's, yeah, it's, it's great to see that we've got a canvas painter in, in this group as well now. Like I've always said, it doesn't really matter what you're painting, even if you're not painting anything, it doesn't really matter. It's just nice to have yeah, a passionate and committed community. So uh, yeah, welcome to the show. I, I hope you're getting a lot out of it. Looks like you are. Brilliant. So uh, yeah, during the break, I actually uh, went and cleaned my paint water. You can see through this now. This is lovely. Earlier on, it was a sludge and it was terrible. And I also went upstairs and I stole some garlic bread from someone's dinner. <laughs> but now I smell like garlic. Cool. Yeah. I hope you guys are having a good and productive evening. Um, it, yeah, it hasn't been working out for me doing the blending that I wanted to do this evening. So um, yeah, leaving that alone today. Just going to be blocking in some more colors on um, Sharon, Susan, Susan, Susan the Trigon. Stop Sharon, I've got to stop that business. Sharon and Susan. Um, yeah, I did notice that uh, some people have put in some comments about the projects that they are doing this evening. Uh, where are they? God, you guys have been talking so much. Um, Leslie says that I get to be the first to see the sneak peek of his YouTube thing. Absolutely, that's the way it's going to be. Thank you very much. Cool. Uh, Jeff says that he's talking to an American who is ordering four big Normandy buildings. For those of you that don't know Jeff, Jeff is my dad. Hi, Dad. Uh, and he also owns and runs the business Purple Life Creations, where if you want to have some really cool terrain features, buildings or something like that for your War Games table, uh, over 40, maybe over 50, 40, I'm going to say over 40 years, and err on the side of caution, over 40 years of uh, very, very talented um, experience, uh, makes some of the, the world's finest bespoke buildings. It's got its own Facebook page, uh, website. If you're interested, you should definitely head on over and have a look. Uh, so four big Normandy buildings. It sounds like it's going to be an amazing uh, thing. Um, so looking forward to seeing some projects coming out there. Uh, or Actually, while we're on the subject, I saw your, um, I think it was your 15 millimeter um, Roman camp um, buildings, the other bit of buildings, terrain, the other day. It looked absolutely amazing. And from what you said, that there's going to be some more um, roads and things. To get, that's going to look absolutely amazing incredible and it's done so if you're interested head on over to facebook or even purplelinecreations.co.uk um yeah and have a little look because it's amazing i think that the facebook page is probably more current and relevant so head, head on over there and have a look um <laughs> hi he says um what else have we got going on here uh lots of talks about nurgles and hanging pictures and rooms and stuff it's it's fabulous to know that we've got uh, a diverse range of artists in this in this community the community now uh shaz says uh, on that note guys i've sadly got to leave my two boys need to go to bed now speak to you all again soon bye nice to see you shaz thanks very much for coming along and hopefully we see more of you in the future uh, and obviously when discord is up and running um then there'll be a community for you to come and join in that that will be that would be super cool to see you so thanks very much cheers for now uh leslie uh take care shares oh thanks for coming by my bestie you're awesome hope you had a lovely night and jeff says uh it's 28 millimeter i don't know where i got that from 15 millimeter it certainly looked like it was larger but yeah they looked incredible um so yeah cool head on over and have a little look see let me go over back to um susan the trigon here we are so yeah i've just been um just blocking some colors on some claws and things but also been shaping my brush a little bit it seems to have gone to a really nice uh point but i think that's just because i don't have it loaded with paint um but I, I did get rid of a couple of rogue bristles on there and um yeah when you've when you spent a bit of money on some brushes cutting them up and things this it just feels wrong it just yeah just don't <laughs> just don't feel comfortable cutting up that expensive bit of hardware but sometimes you've got to do it. Um, it's something I thought about doing uh, a quick video on, um, but to be honest, it, it's yeah, you, you, you can you can see that sort of stuff on YouTube, no matter where you go, really. So yeah, all comes under brush care, I suppose. You've got to be prepared to have to shape them. 
Ooh, difficult claw. That's probably the hardest one to get to in there. Can I? Can I get into this side here? I think. Wait, it's tough. Okay, well, <laughs> can I come in from this angle? This is what I'm talking about having to do it for a camera. <laughs> Otherwise, it would make for some very boring viewing. spikes still had like the um, the mold lines on them but they were in such an appropriate place for them to look sharp I left them on so uh, yeah I think it actually it helps it, it might not be a mold line it might actually be that the model is <clears throat> designed to make them look sharp um, if it is good modeling if it's not good opportunity <laughs> that now it's hidden underneath the, <laughs> underneath the huge base oh, just a random hair just floating through the atmosphere beside me there wonderful okay cool so that is the spikes done on there what I want to do just because I'm painting so much gray lately I just want to change it up a little bit oh, I'm gonna paint these um these kind of pincers on the end I'm gonna do them in a like an off-white color um, I really like the Citadel colours in this one, which I did have somewhere, but I have misplaced. Oh, it's behind my paint water. There it is. Uh, Screaming Skull. Screaming Skull. Pop the lid on that. There we go. There's my loading brush. Probably could do with a shake. Give it a shake. You've got to pull faces when you're shaking. There you go. That's, that's much better. I'm gonna get one of those paint mixers. That'd be cool to have. Stop getting so many wrist injuries. Right. Pop this in this part of the palette over here. Might put a bit more in. a nice opportunity to play with some different colours because I haven't really on any of my Tyranny models really got a, a, a large surface area of, of kind of like bone white colours but it's in tiny little details here and there maybe the occasional toothy thing or something just to kind of break up the grey but obviously on this creature it's going to be quite big so I'm looking forward to having some nice sort of bone textures or flavours or whatever you want to call it it'll be quite cool um, did you not buy a paint shaker then? No, I didn't in the end. Um, probably just because I've just been so busy, I've not really thought about it. Um, but yeah, you can, you can pick them up. Very affordable. Don't spend more money than you need to with it. I mean, probably there's a manufacturer out there now cursing my name. Um, but you can you can buy them for £90, £100, so on and so forth, like Vortex's proper paint shaker thing. But you don't need to spend that money. You can get, like Adrian was suggesting a couple of weeks ago, you can actually get like nail varnish shakers. They're exactly the same thing, but they're a third of the price. So um, save, save yourself some money. <clears throat> I've seen people build wonderful contraptions with like a little drill or a saw or something on them um, you don't want to spin them so if you are going to use a drill uh, don't, don't just stick at the end of a drill bit because that will just um, give you centri centrifugal force and it will just separate your paints <laughs> it's the absolute opposite what you want to achieve so bear that in mind 
Um, jigsaws are really good. You can kind of strap them to jigsaws. I've seen people like build contraptions with Lego where they kind of like make a cam system and then just stick the drill in it and it just kind of spins part of it. That's, that's what you want to do. But if you are going to go and build a contraption, do, do make it, make sure it's safe. Please don't hurt yourself. And, then, and if you do hurt yourself, please, please don't point the authorities in my, in my direction saying that maybe I suggest it was a good idea. Okay. It's a really nice colour, this Screaming Skull, and it, and it applies really smoothly. And I've not really experienced an awful lot with it before. I use it as a base for um, some sort of like pink effects because I use it as a base for staining crimson over the top. So when I did my zone throats and I did the brains on them and I do various tentacles on things, you know, like uh, on the spore mines, I did a very similar effect. I used this as the base colour but I still didn't really get to to use it as the white that it's intended, if that makes sense. Because <clears throat> it's um when you when you put the, the crimson on it and you wash the whole area, it changes the colour, it changes it to a pink colour, and then when it runs into the recesses you get a, a heavier concentration of the crimson, which gives you a brain effect, it's very cool. Um Yeah, I've made the mistake of painting tentacles pink in the past. Don't don't do it. <laughs> It, it looks, it's very novice and then staining them with purple is a very rich gaudy if rich and gaudy is what you want then hey definitely do that um, but if you if you want not not necessarily subtle but you want like realistic don't don't paint them pink it's a, it's a bad move he says realistic of course I, I understand that I'm painting a giant space worm I, I, I understand that it is not lost on me but you but you know what I mean Details now. <laughs> I think what I might do when I start staining this with, I'm going to stain it with browns. When I start doing that, I will start using uh, the similar techniques to what I've been doing with the grey on the carapace on the Carnifex to um, sort of just blend out and blend out maybe even go into some quite white colours but work my way out from a, from a, a deep brown to, from the bottom here work my way up getting brighter and brighter it should get a really quite nice um, bone colour Let's see say, on a very serious note, your advice has been amazing, Daniel, and Susan really is looking stunning. The details of the carapace, the joints of the limbs, everything is really looking cool. Thank you very much. That's uh, that's, that's really nice. I, I don't I don't consider myself a, a very good painter. I do think that I am developing. Um, I'm very humble with my um, with my painting skills at the moment um, because we've seen what some people can do out there. Some people are just absolutely amazing. Um, so yeah, I know, I know that I'm not as good as those, but I, I, I certainly have seen vast improvement in my own skills um, from the moment we started doing this show till, till now. Even over the last couple of weeks, just learning stuff, just being bold, you know, just having the, the guts to do something a little bit different, step out from your comfort zone, stop resting on your existing knowledge sets or whatever, you know. If it feels uncomfortable, you're doing something right. If it feels uncomfortable all the time, then you know, probably you're uncomfortable doing something, so don't do it. This paint has got a little bit watery there, so I'm just trying to spread it out a little bit. I don't want it to pool or bead too much. Come up nice and close to the edges in a minute. 
it's just nice to have all the colours blocked in. Where my yellow is going to be, where my grey is going to be, where this bony white colour is going to be, any other colours that I've got in there. I am considering going back over some of my recent um, designs, like the Biovore, because I've come up with some ideas in my brain about how I'm going to do the, the weapons. Uh, if you remember, some a few episodes ago now where I was painting like the the I don't know what you'd call them the, the sacks on the biovore anything that was a sack or a pipe or some kind of weapon tube if you like uh, I wanted to have it as kind of gross almost um un I wanted it to look unpleasant and I wanted it to almost look like it was an infection if you uh, I'm trying to kind of convey my thoughts over on, on how to describe it, an infection I wanted it to look unpleasant to, to touch or to look at um, and, I, and I couldn't really do it. I, I didn't know how to, what colours to use to get that effect across. But I've been thinking about it um, because I'm always reviewing my my techniques and my colour schemes and things. And I think I've come up with some interesting ways to achieve it. So I might revisit it because the solution I came up with, though it looked very cool, wasn't really what I wanted. And it was that. Um, that technical paint that they uh, that Citadel brought out for painting Necron weapons, or you know other cool features like that, the glowing green paint, which I don't have beside me to recall the name of it, but y'all know what I'm talking about. I just used the word y'all. I like it. It felt good. I might use that more often. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it it worked. It looked cool, but it wasn't the effects that I was after. I almost wanted something that looked, I suppose, necrotic to a certain degree. I wanted it to look like some sort of giant you know, spider sack or something. I wanted it to look almost postulant. It shouldn't be a pleasant sight. Um, so yeah, I might go back and have a little play around with some colours there. I do have like an old um, Turan effect, which is essentially a large Khan effects model, somewhere under my bench down here, which I use for playing around with colour scheme tests and things. Um, so what I might do is go back and have another go, play around with some some colours, see see what it looks like. But it does mean going over <laughs> with a, I think it's probably about my sixth or seventh colour scheme on there. So I lose a little bit of the detail on it. In the future, perhaps I'll strip that Tyrannopix down back to bare plastic again, like I have done with so many of my old models. Bring it up to the rest, of the glory of the rest of the army. But that's a long way away right now. Okay, the paint's just kind of moving around a little bit on there now. Wonderful. That's looking pretty good. I don't know what colour to do the inside of the mouth. An old colour scheme I used to do was blue and it looked really good because they all used to be dark green as a, as a general colour scheme. Uh, their hides were green and their carapaces were black and the blue stood out and is really nice. It was something that I tried on the Red Terror to start with. Um, I don't think blue will work with this colour scheme so I might just do a classic red but it seems a little bit of a cop out doesn't it really? I want to try and do something different so if you've got any suggestions I'm all ears. Um, but you know, if none of it works, I'll go for the red mouths. Uh, how's Leslie saying? Uh, Nurgle likes your description. <laughs> Thanks very much. Yeah, pustulant. Pustulant. That's a good word. I need a bit of cleaner in there because that colour has clung to some of my bristles. Um, I managed to remove most of that there, I think. <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, put a bit more cleaner in that brush at the end of the day. Mm -mm. Wonderful. Okay, so back to grey then. I would like to... I probably I'm going to attack the bottom part um, another day because I've already determined that my painting skills aren't that great today. I don't have the finesse that I really need to achieve that. I could um, get some of the, the edging. You, you can see it in here. I might try and do some of that. But even that's probably a little bit difficult for me today so I might just start getting some more layers on the on the larger areas here I also I want to kind of carve out some of these seams in here that aren't so well <laughs> hidden so I might get a, a little knife and just kind of scrape some of these out put a bit of green stuff in there 
a liquid green stuff. Um, see if I can fill them, but maybe another another day. So I might put some layers on the big claws, on the on the back parts here. Uh, I've got a couple of the um, carapaces on the front. These all could benefit from having just another coat on there, and they'll probably that'll probably do for those. And then the, the tail section is. Um, I said that's another story. It's gonna, that's going to probably take some time. Um, just says gloss pink. Yeah, pink will probably work. Um, Leslie agrees. Gloss pink. Just yes. Epic color. Yeah. Maybe maybe that is a place for me to use um, pink. Maybe I'll, I'll try pinks with um, crimson on them and see what see what happens. It might actually be the right way to go. And I might do the tongue a, a more purpley sort of color just to identify the tongue differently. As you can see, there's, there's quite a more in this girl. Um, and that's, that's a lot of teeth in there. A lot of teeth. Um, I could have, I suppose, uh, used the air the air gun to um, spray the colour in there to get good coverage, but that's just going to be a, a paintbrush job. I might use one of my more messier paintbrushes, just because you can just st stab it in there, kind of get that done. Yeah, gloss pink's probably a good idea. Do you reckon gloss, like full gloss, or even a semi gloss? Nah, full gloss, surely. Yeah, full gloss, probably. Right, let's get some grey paint in here. Too much talking. Back to the big brush. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just going to start at the top. In the middle. Work my way down. Because I'm, I'm on this bigger model, I can actually probably... I'll zoom out a little bit. Because uh, normally... I'm uh, working on a slightly smaller model. I can come away a little bit now. There we go. A bit better, isn't it? Darren says he's back again. Hi, Darren. Didn't realise you'd gone, mate. Sorry. Are you uh, working on any painting jobs uh, lately, Darren? Or have you, have you got anything on the go? I know you've, uh, you've had your lorry that you've been working on for a bit. And some other bits and pieces. Or are you still painting in the living room? Or have you moved on to a different room of the house? range of grey colours and see what different colours there are, so different versions of grey there are, so I can see if I can get some like, some nice staging of my blends. Okay. <laughs> Darius says, sadly no mate. Oh, I'm sorry. Work, work, work though, right? Gotta pay them bills. That's a smooth paint. There we go. Purple tongue. Good idea. Very gloss. Okay. Cool. All right. Now I'll give it a go. I think. hairs today. D today's theme is cat hairs. <laughs> Get away you cat hair. just realised how difficult it's going to be trying to get the um, blending and the highlights that I've been doing on the on the Carnifex onto this model. 
when I've kind of got to get the paintbrush in and under <laughs> these like areas here is going to be a real, <laughs> a real nightmare. But that's tomorrow's problem, not today's problem. We'll laugh about it now, look back at it in the future. One of the problems of painting pre-built models, but I can't complain because we're a gift. Oh, I could complain. God damn you, Leslie. God damn you giving me these models. episodes ago that well almost every episode that Kyle has been in we talk about um, making things look grim and dark to have grim dark yet brightly themed Tyranids will be quite quite an achievement that's what that's what I'm trying to go for eventually yeah <laughs> glad to be of service <laughs> cheers <laughs> Grey, somewhere on one of the arms in there. Must have had a misfire in the past. I'm sure I can scrape that away later. Definitely dry. From a previous painting. Yeah. smoothly. You, you can hear it, the brush strokes make like a oh man, they make they make a sound that is that is satisfying. If they just kind of comb the surface. dig out those lines so if I can hide them with painting that would be ideal but I don't, I don't think I'm going to be able to really hide those seams they do have some some pretty hefty seams sometimes these big tyranny models it can be a bit of a pain to sort of cover them up so I might might have to dig them dig them out with a, a knife just a knife tip or something and just Put some liquid green stuff in there, fill them. Might not have to sand them if I can get the liquid green stuff in there properly. I've struggled with it in the past, but I've seen videos of it being used as a product that you that you can get from Green Stuff World. And they, they do a lot of like video tutorials just to quickly showing you how to use it. And and yeah, they do it effortlessly. So I'm sure it's a user error here that I'm that I'm discussing. It's really good for just filling in little seams. Perhaps there are similar products from other companies where that there are better. I like Green Stuff well, though. I think they do make some really cool stuff. says grey is a terrific colour to work with so easy to blend shades yeah it's just it's it's just a really nice colour if if it is a colour at all that's a discussion we've had before isn't it um, obviously in a paint in, in, 
it is a colour. Yeah, it's, it's just really nice. I've had a lot of luck with blues before. Reds and yellows, I struggle with orange though. Orange is a really nice colour to work with. I've only done the smallest amount of orange work before. Um, but it is, it's a really nice colour. It's a nice effect quite easily. Um, pink is a really good undercoat if you want to achieve orange and you would paint yellow over the top. It's really nice effects that way. Carapace on the top there done. In some areas it's a little patchy, I can see it with a close eye, but it's not going to matter because um, by the times that I've sprayed the uh, the black uh, ink over it and by the times I've uh, gone to some areas with the highlights and blended it all in, it's all going to be hidden under another layer eventually, but it is, it is the slightest um, patchiness. There's a tiny bit up here, for example, that I can see, but well, I don't think you can even see it on the camera. Um, but you know, if you if you're working on stuff and you've got like these tiny little patches, then consider if it's necessary to paint it over with another coat. It might not be. Save yourself some time, save yourself the paint, and eventually save yourself the money. Starship Troopers cross with Tremors themed film and it would be amazing. We've all seen the Astartes short series now um, by uh, I think the gentleman's name is Sayama uh, Peterson, uh, the gentleman who is behind the Astartes series. Um, he was hired by Games Workshop and basically I think it's become the lead of their um, uh, cinematics and animations department. Um, just goes to show you that if you just put yourself out there, who knows who's going to hire you. Um, and basically Games Workshop are now just doing lots of animations and things. The whole department is designed to just making little mini movies and things it's going to be really really cool really looking forward to the stuff that they bring out <sighs> should i do both top claws yeah i'm gonna do top talons and work my way down rather than doing one side at a time i think uh, Jeff says I used it for World War II buildings and add browns to get that muted look. Yeah, I really liked your um, recent Normandy buildings where you did what you what you labelled as muted colours. I thought those colours were brilliant and they're really reminiscent of a lot of um, World War II movies, like Saving Private Ryan, for example. Um, just goes to show that that's probably the same sort of approach that they take with it. The, the colours just match. Like there's there's a certain palette for that that period for that conflict it looks